Welcome to this week's Powerhouse. Coming up on today's show, we've got all this. This week, I'll be looking at an infectious new bug with a paint scheme so radical it'll turn heads round and round and round. It might turn a few stomachs too. Dave Greenwood ponders the merits of going the distance on a champion supernova. I'll be touring round Steve McCann's racy replica, a calibre of the highest calibre. And Dave will be checking out an exclusive bug with more horses than the Cheltenham Gold Cup. And if that's not enough, we'll be seeing El Bandito himself, Spain's finest Lobo Castro. We've got all that to come up, but first off, got a bit of a history lesson for you. We've got a couple of lovely cars to save, but have a look at this first. Well, that was a nice trip down memory lane there, but uh, I don't think many of you have seen a Beetle quite like this one before. Well, you might have because it features on our opening credits short for a, a couple of seconds there, but uh, here it is in the flesh. It's been brought all the way over from Germany for us today, and it was originally built in Mexico, as you probably know. This is the Raid Project car, the, the Beetle to see, really. I mean, look at this paintwork. Now, this is cubic surface technology, which is going to be explained to us later, hopefully, because it goes straight over my head got platinum black over orange which finishes the car off quite nicely and these quite large wheels here these are 18 inch Porsche Cup style wheels which do the business don't they you must agree I mean this car is going to be a real head turner it's the ultimate posing machine if I've ever seen it but to top it all off it's a diesel now it's been chipped and it does 118 brake horsepower which is it's nothing to uh, nothing to laugh at but if we have a look in the interior here we see that the uh, the theme continues I mean this is striking same color coordination again we've got this cubic surface technology again on the paintwork which looks completely unbelievable in here the center console just blows my mind to be honest with you a lovely steering wheel there with an airbag and it's a decent little wheel as well nice gear gear uh, stick there nice gator and the chrome pedals just to finish it off nicely what my favorite feature about this car is the old english style diagonal stitch on the seats i think that looks just beautiful and it's for the leather glove posse as well keeps it nice well we've seen this car now but uh let's meet the man who brought it over for us his name is mike kimpton and he's over here on our sofa hello mike welcome Hi. to the show now mike the first thing i've got to ask is when you came up here it is a diesel what was the economy like of this car uh well we left Leighton buzzard uh to come here and it took a quarter of a, the tank on uh, diesel uh, so i would say it was averaging about 45 to 50 to the gallon that's unbelievable isn't it and it's obviously a big head turner and this this paintwork for starters i mean what is this all about well the paintwork is uh new technology that uh, was developed in japan and raid in germany have the uh, sole license for this particular project and what this has done is enabled uh, a company to uh, do large panels like this, which has never been done before. It's usually on just like carbon look uh, yeah. gear knobs or very small pieces. And um, this technology um, now is so good and so refined that you can see the um, skill with which this has been laid. So you can put layer upon layer and you can do any kind of construction within the paintwork. And basically, it's put into a, ta a water tank and the panel is lifted through. And once it seals itself on, which is the secret of the technology, of course, even with salt and uh, the wear and tear that you'll get on the road, yeah. um, it won't come off. That's fantastic. And I mean, we did see the car at the show where we actually uh, we spoke to you there and you, you had people coming up to you with checkbooks and things, didn't you? Oh, yes, it's uh, totally unique. Uh, I mean, obviously, it's a new car, which is one of the reasons that we... Uh, decided to develop it because it, we, it shows what the motor industry can do uh, for a car that isn't even in Europe yet. That's it. And, uh, so to have um, all the modifications already for this car I think is quite incredible. It's a very, very nice car. Very, very nice. We beat them off with sticks at the show, weren't we, Mike? <laughs> we certainly were. The, uh, uh, every single day uh, people were coming up and uh, uh, surrounding the car and uh, hopefully um, they went away with a view that the 
uh, the things that they saw on it were, um, you know, something that they would like to uh, get onto their cars later, which stops the adage that modern cars today are boring. I just believe that this car is going to be the new concept car. I That's really, it. I agree with you, yeah. I really think it's uh, a good step forward, the new Beetle. I, I think, think so. so. There's a lot of potential there. Now, the body panels are actually standard, apart from the paint, obviously. Yeah. Because it accentu accentuates the actual uh, width of the car, doesn't it? That's what we're trying to show, is that uh, when you, uh, many cars have had uh, body kits put on them, and uh, sometimes they begin to look a bit tatty and, uh, you know, the joins at the wings don't look so good. So what we've tried to show with this car is that you can, you can give the illusion of size, you can give the illusion of uh, many things with a car just by purely painting it in a different way. Uh, and if you didn't have the cubic technology, I mean, that is basic orange paint underneath and it would still have uh, the effect of enlarging the wings and enlarging uh, what the car looks like instead of being all black. Listen, Matt, that car's an absolute beauty, and I'm, uh, I'm pretty sure we're going to be seeing a few more cars with that kind of paintwork on them, because I certainly want that doing on my Fiesta, actually, but uh, thanks a lot for bringing it along, Mike. That's You're brilliant. Welcome. Thank you. Thanks. It's about time, and I bet you've been wondering where they are, but it's time for our Novas. That's right. We've, uh, most people start with them, and uh, so did the chap that we're about to meet as well. Got to show you this. Stripped out inside, sound deadened, done all himself. Look at the work that's gone into that. That roll cage is homemade. He's done it himself, fitted it himself. You can actually source it through him as well. It's an absolutely awesome motor. There's lots of tiny details to pick up. We've got a huge exhaust on the back. It's been specially made for the car, it runs straight through. The interior, as we've seen in the back, stripped out. We've got racing seats, we've got harnesses, we've got a lovely little security device in there as well. The steering wheel comes straight out, so nobody's going to nick this. And believe me, with the security system he's got in it, no one even try either. As we move down, we've got these lovely side mirrors as well, a lot shorter. You can source them through him as well. Single wiper on the front. We've got lovely little side repeaters. We've got huge alloy wheels which finish off the side of the car absolutely beautifully. If you look at the brakes as well, we've got drilled and cross-grooved as well. Absolutely fantastic. Little bonnet vents in here as well. Front, mainly standard. As you notice, we've got a badgeless grille at the front here as well. This is my favourite bit though. If we can find the catch anyway, we'll see. Right. Nova 1.4? I don't think so. This is the 2 litre 16 valve engine, which for some reason somebody decided it was time was put in a car with the weight of a gnat. This car has got 145 brake horse at the wheels, 185 brake horse at the flywheel. Absolutely amazing. We've got air filters holding it all together. We've got a lovely cross member here. It's a fantastic little engine with lots and lots of power. Now, I drove up here in this car today, and it's just, speed is just unbelievable. It will accelerate like nothing else on the road. The, uh, he was offered um, a straight cut gear linkage for it, but that would uh, bring down his top speed. And on a private road, he claims to have had 140 mile an hour out of this, but uh, we wait to see whether that's true. We'll get him down to an airstrip one day and have a go. Nova's. A lot of people call them, personally, when they look like this. I like them, especially with this sort of speed. Let's come on over here, let's meet the owner. Brett. All right. Welcome to the show, how are you? I'm all right, thanks. Are you? I'm fine. How did you get started, Brett? Well, I've had Novas for about six years. I had another one before it that kept mainly standard for insurance reasons, because I was younger then. Uh, got this one totally standard, and then uh, started off messing with it, did the little things first, put a set of wheels on it lowered it in an exhaust, met a mate of mine, had a chat, started looking at putting big engines in, I thought, <laughs> why not, why not indeed? <laughs> so we uh, looked into it insurance-wise and found a special company to, uh, to cover it, and then uh, that started it. But again, back to the insurance that you just mentioned, what kind of policy are you looking at for a car like this? Well, uh, I'm 27, I've got full no claims, uh, I pay £435 fully comp, uh, with agreed value on it and track cover if I need it through That's a special company. So what, it's. What's the track cover? Uh, the track cover is uh, you agree it per day between 15 and 30 pounds, and again it's fully comp. 
just doubles your access to 600, but it's worth it. <laughs> it's, it's worth it if you're going to you know, give it some stick on the, on the strip or uh, around the track, which I have done. Oh, right, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I'm sure it's lots of fun when you get it there. A lot more fun than on the road, yeah. <laughs> yeah, a lot. <laughs> Well, Brett, thanks very much for bringing the car it's along. Blinding, no problem Brett, no. at all. Brett brought me up here today, so I'm going to drive home, which Dave doesn't know about until now. <laughs> which I didn't know about until now. <laughs> <laughs> thanks a lot, Brett. No Cheers, problem. Brett. Thanks. Thanks. That's all we got time for in this part, but join us in part two. We've got two more bad cars for you. See you in a bit. children, Professor Piston's back, and as you can see, this week they shrunk me down to explain about chipping. As you can see, behind me is a circuit board, and on that circuit board are chips that could be worth up to 200 brake horsepower. Yes, 200 brake horsepower to the right engine. Mmm, I thought you'd like that. Well, when a manufacturer designs a fuel-injected car, they allow a certain amount of tolerance in the engine management, the chip, so that the engine will last a long time. But aftermarket manufacturers create chips which reduce that tolerance and create more brake horsepower. Therefore, you get more power for your engine. But remember children, mm -hmm, that it also affects your insurance. So be good and be careful. Bye. Welcome back to part two of the powerhouse. Now, this is Steve McCann and he's brought his Calibra along to show us. And believe me, it's very special, as I'll show you now. It's a 1994 and he's gone for the total DTM look. Now, if we look at the uh, under the bonnet of this car to start with, there's not been much done here. Although you'll have to agree, it is absolutely beautiful. Everything's completely chromed up, lovely touch there. But that's, uh, like we said, that's just the standard twin cam 16 valve. Oops. Now, if we make our way along the car here, you'll start seeing where the nice touches come in. Got the 17 inch Venoms there, lowered 40 mil. And the lovely, uh, the, well, the mint repeaters are pretty nice little touch. And the DTM badges as well round it off nicely. Make our way along here as well. We get into the interior of the car. It's been busy in here as well. Aluminium race style mats. Nice gear knob there. Lovely head unit, I must say. And, uh, oh, it's got the standard leather interior as well, which is always nice. Now, if we move along the side here as well. Side skirts, unbelievable. Very nice kit there. And then we come to this, the piece de resistance. One great big, huge touring car style spoiler. Now, uh, I believe there's a little bit of a story behind this, but Steve's going to tell us about that later. Again, we see the badges at the back, and we've got the uh, carbon fibre number plates around with a private plate on. Very posh. We'll lift this. Well, we'll try. And we'll see his lovely install that he's got in there. He's been very busy in there with the carpet, the speakers. Uh, looking smart there, I think. Nice big twin exhaust there, two and a half inch Scorpion. Immaculate. As you have to agree with me, this car is the ultimate touring car lookalike. I mean, it's unbelievable. Just hasn't got the performance, but I think he's going to work on that. Let's go and meet the man. Steve, how are you, man? Good evening. Cheers, thanks for coming along. Steve, you're into touring cars, obviously. You've yes. gone for the look there. Yep. What about the engine then? What are you going to get done to that soon? Because you've left it pretty much as standard. Um, I've always been unsure which way to go. People's went with. Uh, turbos uh, and all sorts of things so uh, I've always been hesitant because I don't really know which way to, right. to go, what direction to go. But the, the Calibra is quite a nice car anyway, I mean I, I really think, I rate them actually, I do like them. Did you buy it with a mind to thinking right I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go the distance on this or did you just think it was a nice car? Well <laughs> when I first thought about buying a Calibra I, I thought I would leave it standard, I thought it was a nice enough looking car but as soon as I bought it uh, already the ideas were <laughs> coming to my head and um, as you say they've always liked the touring cars so um, and liked the way they look as well as the, the way they perform obviously and I just thought it'd be a nice idea for my car to look like that. What was the first thing you actually did to it then? Well the first thing I got for it was the Zender body kit although that was one of the last items to go in the car. Um, I started off with the small touches, the indicators, the badges, um, just sort of tidying up the, the body of the car. Uh, the next thing was the wheels, I put the wheels on which made the 
that was the biggest impact. Yeah. Um, on the car standard wheels don't do much for it. No, they don't. Do you notice a difference after you've done the modifications to the car, as sort of far uh, as the performance goes? I notice the rear spoiler. It does, really? It pulls the back end down. Does it? Yep. You can notice it in the motorway. You feel the car squatting down uh, the what? back and in long, Have you long bends. The sort of downforce that you've actually got on it. Nope. No. 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 Never. Is it an actual piece of kit, or is it something that's been built especially to go on your car? No. Uh, the that, the spoiler is actually intended for a BMW 3 Series. Uh, it was it's an exact replica of the touring car that raced in the UK a few years ago. Um, I took a bit of a risk ordering it because I wasn't sure if it would suit the car or if it would fit. Um, but I just went for it and I was lucky enough it worked out. But it was rather expensive <laughs> as well, actually, wasn't it? The, uh, it was, yeah. What kind of, what yeah. were we talking about there for that? Uh, Seven hundred pounds. <laughs> <laughs> How much do you think you've spent on the car? Uh, as far as the I bought the car for eleven thousand right. pounds and I spent. Almost another nine thousand on it. Nice, Steve. Thanks very much for bringing the car. Thanks. Steve. When you've done the back install, bring it along. We'll have another look. Right, I'll do. Thanks a lot. <laughs> Thank Cheers. you. It's time for Lobo Castro now. He uh, assures me he's going to ride the bike today, but I don't reckon he can ride bikes. I reckon he's a bit of a wuss, personally. Was? ¿Qué coño estás diciendo, Madero Verde? No tiene ni puta idea, el cabrón. You know what I mean? Well, last week I said I was going to introduce you to manufacturer street fighters, and here's one of them, one of the most famous to go absolutely bonkers with, the Suzuki 1200 Bandido. One thousand two hundred cc, a lot of torque, a lot, a lot of power, and it weighs nothing. I'll mention just a few of the situations that you could get into when you open gas big time. In first gear, the shiny clocks will smash your visor if it's not bulletproof. In second gear, and a bit of clutch, you'll achieve a nice long wheelie. In third gear and in the wet, at about 45 miles per hour, you'll find yourself looking ahead with the back wheel in the corner of your eye, thinking that that should not be there, but it's looking good. The Bandit actually looks Los Cojones de Perro without any modifications. Nevertheless, the straight handlebars with a bit of soft protection for those first gear wheelies, the twin spot headlamps with uh, carbon fibre, whether it's looking like or the real thing, are very nice touches to add on. Also, adding custom made mudguards, tailpiece, and bits and pieces surrounding the engine and under. And tweaking the engine are very potential tricks for transforming your manufacturer's street fighter just that little bit more. And after all those things that happen to you when you first have a go on a bandit, let me tell you that when you are riding and going for it, you can hardly see the bike under you, and because of its light weight, you just wonder where the hell are those hundred horses coming from. But remember not to wonder so much, because when you next look down, you'll find yourself doing 120 plus and holding on like if you were on a roller coaster. Even though the Suzuki 1200 Bandit does not have the nicker elastic snapping power of some of your plastic handbag super sports bike, this is a bare knuckle street fighter for some serious thrills and hopefully not too many spills. And talking about wearing women's knickers, over to the girls at the studio. Doesn't get any better, does he? You may remember the beetle that Dave showed us with a fancy paint job. Well, Toby has brought another one for us to look at. This over here is the Yokohama Beetle. It's a project car that they've done, and believe me, I believe this is the way forward. This is a beautiful little machine. You're going to get your notice no matter what you do. The uh, graphics on the side are done by the same people that do the Jordan F1 car, which is a nice little touch, I think. Let's start with this splitter on the back. Looks like it's a standard piece of kit, I think. It finishes the car off beautifully. Little nice uh, touch on old Beatles that I've just found. Look at that. I think that's really quite trick. Carbon fibre filler cap, very nice indeed. We've got some lovely wheels on here, which I'll show you in a minute. I'd want to be seen personally if I was in this car, so what's all this about? Tinted windows. It's hiding what's in here. Come here and have a look at this. I think this is fabulous. Look at that. These are not yet for sale, these seats. They've been specially put in here for the team. 
and uh, it finishes the interior. And believe me, they're very nice to sit in. One day you'll be able to buy them yourself. Like I said, the wheels. Fantastic. You've seen these before, Evo R's. You can have them with the nut there, or you can take this off, which I quite like. Well, you can if you can get your fingers behind it anyway. Comes off, and then you can put the nut back on. Fantastic. I like that. Flunt splitter. Lovely. It's very hard, so you've got to watch where you're going. No speed bumps on this thing at all. You grab that, it's going to rip the entire front off by the looks of it. It's very, very hard. The piece of resistance of this car is under here, and this is what makes it special for me. Look at that. Tim Styles at his best once again. Who'd have thought that you could fit a VR6 engine in a Beetle? Most people, well, what are you going to have? A 1.6. There was talk of a 1.8 turbo. We'll wait and see when they actually get sold. But a VR6 is absolutely amazing. Apparently, there's not much cutting and shutting done in there to fit it in. Go straight in. This has got 196 brake course, roughly. Absolutely great. I'll tell you what it's like to drive, but I haven't got a clue. One day, I might find out. For now, let's go and see Toby. He might be able to tell us a bit more about it. <laughs> Toby, how are you? How are you doing? <laughs> now, I know you can't tell me much about it, can you really? No, not really. <laughs> <laughs> how did this car start? Uh, the car started in America about four months ago where we bought one um, for the London Motor Show. No, it's Birmingham Motor Show at the NEC. Um, we put it on the Yokohama and TSW stand um, just as an attraction as it's a new car. Um, it got so much attention from all the, the, the boys that buy the, the tyres and the wheels for their car that one of the sales, li sales lads said to us, look, why don't we keep the car, do some more work to it, and then use it as our promo car. And you're quite happy with the re reactions that it's actually getting at the moment? The reaction is absolutely fantastic. Is the it? car, just the, it's a Beetle. That's the thing, That's isn't it? it? Um, it's... What does the Beetle enthusiast think about it? Have you had much reaction off them? From the f no one's seen the car as it is. You're the first people that have seen the car You're in really? its current state. Exclusive. This is, this is yes. a premiere. <laughs> <indeed>. <laughs> Excellent. Good. But the, the Beetle itself gets an enormous amount of attention. Um, we've spoken to a lot of magazines about using this as a feature car, and it's yeah, excellent, mainly because it's got the engine. I yeah. think it's the only V6 one in Europe um, yeah. at the moment, yeah. Toby, thanks very much for bringing the car Thank on. you for having Thank me. Thank you very much. Hope to see it again when it's yeah. finished. Thanks a lot, Toby. Cheers, mate. Cheers. We've run out of time, but uh, here's what we've got next week. Next week on The Powerhouse, we'll be taking a trip to Mallory Park in Leicester to find out a bit more about the Eurocar series. We'll be checking out V8s, V6s and Legends. And Lobo Castro has his balance and biking skills tested down at the pits. See you next week. <laughs>